Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, this is my thumbnail, and this is an unboxing of the Dungeons & Lasers Dulcere campaign. Uh, I did not get all of it. This isn't even all of what was offered, but I did get a fair amount. So last year they fulfilled the Encounters campaign. I did paint and assemble all of that. Well, I guess that makes sense, right? You have to assemble it, and then you paint it. I did all of that and showed it on the on this channel last year. And I intend to do mostly the same with this. Uh, I'm not sure I'll paint every single individual. There, there are a lot of smaller individual uh, people in this. And I'm quite sure I'll probably assemble them all. But I'm not sure I'll paint them all. <laughs> well, I guess I, I probably will pick the ones I like the most. And I'll paint them slowly over time. There are a couple of older things like this uh, modular river and these trees here. That, uh, that I got as my extra packs instead of like more characters and stuff. I, I really wanted to add to some of the, the elven woods and some of the other little things that I got last time. So I could actually do this. I've got a 4x4 four four table here and I'd like to do this whole thing up uh, as kind of a forest for Pulp Alley. So uh, I got more trees and I got a river. It's going to be a really beautiful uh, display once I finally get it all together. Alright, so I already know... The very first thing I'm going to open and paint in this is going to be the Dragon Turtle. So let's open it first. So all of this was shipped all at once. They're fulfilling their campaign uh, actually I think a couple of months early, maybe a month earlier than planned. And uh, they've been mailing these out for the past few weeks. I haven't seen anybody really doing an unboxing on, on anything though. Uh, I, uh, so I thought it might be fun if I would do that. Uh, this is the model that I backed it for. <laughs> I'm not saying I bought all of that, all of this, just to get this thing. But this, this was the thing that they released that pushed me over the edge and made me want to just have all of this. So I'm super excited. Uh, and it's really interesting. So last time when I got my pledge, there were, uh, there were, there were boxes, but they're all kind of like bigger boxes like this. Luckily, none of this is assembled already. <laughs> but there, last time I got this, it was all basically big boxes like this. And uh, and now they've sent them in comparatively smaller boxes. I guess they've, they've made it a little bit more modular so that they could split things up. All right, let me get those off the ground so I'll be happy again. All right, so let's open this turtle. Archon Studios is in Poland. They use a unique type of plastic, which seems unique to me. It's called a hips plastic. Uh, these kits are going to come with no instructions in a box uh, like this. This is more than the turtle. This is uh, this is like a, a few different models. There's a turtle, a mimic dragon. Uh, Adult Fireworm and Roblin, Roblin on Rashita, which is like a Roblin the Goblin riding a big rat thing or something. All right, let's we'll zoom in so we can get a good look at this. Uh, it's interesting; these are in small, uh, smaller sheets, so it could be a lot of assembly to do. All right, I'll put out the mat. So it's easy to see. All right, bringing down the first piece, we'll take a look. Uh, and we're gonna go through these pretty fast because there's absolutely an enormous amount of, uh, of stuff here. This is a really hard plastic. Uh, the biggest deal with these things is uh, some assembly, sometimes with the assemblies, I've found that there were a lot of gaps to fill and stuff. And with this particular one, I'm going to show you these pieces, but then at the end, we're going to time jump and you're going to get to see it fully assembled and painted because I'll probably do that about 20 seconds after we, uh, well, it'll take longer than that, but I will start about 20 seconds after I finish filming this video. Ooh, a lot of incredible detail in there. That makes it really super easy to paint. Uh, and this one's got like water coming down the teeth and stuff. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that. I was actually looking at the picture of that and thinking I might want to shave that part off. 
<laughs> they have this boat that's like stuck to the top of them. It's an optional thing, so you, you don't have to include it. I, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to look at it. I'll probably magnetize it so it can come off or go on there. It'd be a kind of an interesting, um, it'd be an interesting terrain item, if nothing else, to have that boat kind of sitting there in the water, and then all of a sudden the turtle appears up underneath it. That would be a lot of fun. All right. And I think that's all of the turtle parts. Uh, we've got this thing here. Which is this? This is the, uh, the Mimic Dragon. I'm not sure what a Mimic Dragon is. So this whole campaign was actually uh, part of a 5e adjacent uh, thing that they did that said they have a whole bestiary and they have a campaign book. And it's just a bunch of, uh, it's, if you like Dungeons and Dragons anyway, you could implement all of their stories and their characters and stuff. And what's neat is it's basically all of this. Uh, this core set contains all the different uh, variations on a theme that they've come up with for Dungeons and Dragons. I'm going to try to stop talking so much and, and keep uh, making my way through. Uh, here we have the fire worm. Uh, and it looks really, really neat. Oh my gosh, it looks like I guess some brains or something like that. <laughs> it's kind of odd. These things don't have, um, they don't have instructions. So I'm not sure what... Uh, what parts I'm looking at. In fact, some of these look like they might be parts of the rat and some of them uh, maybe not. But here's the last part. There's the last sprue in there. And this is definitely uh, the rat, the guy riding the rat around. So, <laughs> yes, very neat. All right, so let's take a little time jump and take a look at that turtle. All right, so it's been about two days. Uh, I received all of that stuff on Friday and it is now Sunday. And I finished my first model from this new set. It is the Turtle Dragon. And he is glorious. It does have this really cool uh, removable boat, which I love. Like, uh, it could be... I, I like stuff that can kind of tell a story, or, or and I, but I like it to be optional. This is the kind of thing... You don't even have to magnet... It fits on there so so nicely... You don't have to magnetically attach it or anything. It's going to be pretty plenty stable if it's just sitting there on the table. I mean, you couldn't play with it necessarily. Uh, I have not glued the carapace down. I've just got it sitting there. But that's like a, a little bit of a look inside of it. So you can totally hide things in here if you wanted to. <laughs> also, make it like a little secret safe out of the guy. This video is already going to be pretty long, but I wanted you to have a good look at at least one of these monsters because I just, this was, this is what I backed this thing for. Now, I'm not saying I would have paid the amount I paid for all of this <laughs> for just this guy. This is definitely the part of it that I was looking forward to the most, and I'm super happy to have it. My crafting videos on this channel have been sort of hit or miss, but I'm going to make a short video about uh, building this and maybe some tips for building this specific one. If people really like it, I'll do other ones. If not, it'll just get it chucked into the the, the vast array of my videos. <laughs> so, and so because this video is already going to be kind of long, I'm going to go ahead and skip to that. I have included a couple of other painted guys here so you can kind of see uh, like the big boy from last time just to see how he compares to these other ones. In terms of length and height, uh, he's big, but he's not like Tarask big. Uh, he's definitely much bigger than the baby dragon or something like that, but he's a big boy though. I, I think the airship probably will end up being a little bit bigger than that. And that might be one of the next ones I build. Well, actually the next one I'm going to make is the, uh, is the mimic dragon. I've got about three quarters of it, uh, ready to go. So I'll probably paint it up next. Uh, but something I forgot when I did my original unboxing is I, I, I misplaced this note. So they sent this nice letter about... You know, thank you for backing and stuff. And uh, they also sent an advertisement for Caves, their new campaign that they're working on. We talk about this a bit in the video already. It's, I've gone all in on it. I've, I've given them all my money. Uh, it also has this map of Dulcere. And it's a, it's a really, it seems like kind of a small area. In fact, let me zoom out here. 
but that's uh, that's the a map of the lands that the books that they've uh, created are talking about. So that's kind of fun. Got a little crinkled on one corner, but uh, it's not too bad. All right, back to the video. All right, I'm going to continue on with the super stretch goals. Uh, the way it works with them is if you back at a certain level, you get to stretch goals. If you back at a further level, a little bit a little further up the food chain, you get the super stretch goals. And in this one we have Queen, Lord, and Monster Monstrosities. Okay. So let's flip this over. We've got the Giant Kraken. Another really cool one. I'm super I'm excited to see all of these things. A, a Mimic Dragon. So we got a second Mimic Dragon. Okay. Uh, the Undying Queen Anara, Wolf Drake, or Wolf Wolf Rake, <laughs> uh, Chaos the Soul Harvester, and uh, a Devourer of Sanity. It says free underneath it. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> and free! Your insanity is free to leave your body. Again, a big box of plastic. And, uh, all right. Well, I have to leave this up so I can actually reference what this might be. So this is the, uh, the Soul Harvester. Or at least part of the Soul Harvester. Oh my gosh, so this little thing that is standing up around, this, these are all little people. Oh, they're all little skeletons. Or, or, no, they're not even skeletons. They're people. They're all being sucked into this thing. Oh my gosh, the detail on this is crazy. What a spooky character. Oh, spooky scary. All right, I'm excited to see uh, see that one all finished. And here, this has got to be the Kraken. This has got to be part of the Kraken. It's That's a big mouth. That's a big mouth in that Kraken. Hmm. Some big tentacles. Very nice. And here's some more Kraken. That's going to be a fairly big model. Boy, that would be neat right in the middle of that uh, Elven Woods that I was talking about. <laughs> a little pond with a big Kraken coming out the top of it. All right, now this is something else. This is probably the Mimic Dragon. The wolf drake. This is the wolf drake. It says so right here. Oh wow, it's got a little big piece of terrain on there and stuff too. Uh, it's nice. Their bases look really nice. Nicely detailed and stuff. Uh, this has got to be some more of the Kraken. Very neat. Looks like his face, probably, with all the teeth and stuff. And right here we have... What is this? Looks like a fairy person. This is the Undying Queen. She'll never die. She's never going to give you up. She's never going to let you down. The Undying Queen. Alright. And the last sprue... The Mimic Dragon. If I still had the other Mimic Dragon, I'd compare them to see if they look different. But I don't. Alright. Moving on. <laughs> We're going to have to go quick because there's a lot of this stuff to show you guys. Is there any more super stretch goals? These are all stretch goals, stretch goals, corset, corset. Well, oh, here's a... I know that was a super... Yes. All right. So here's another super stretch goal. And this was a airship. Some sort of an airship thing. Flying Pirates Airship. Become the hero of land, sea, and sky. All right. Oh, we got boats. 
So this has like a flying base, which is something I haven't seen. It's a little scratched up, but that's all right. It's kind of different. A little clear flying base. Ah, uh, some very boat-like parts from this. This thing's definitely uh, been around the bend. Boy, I love painting the wood stuff. That they they do wood really well. Lots of very thick textures and stuff in here. Mm-hmm. Got some ballast on the side. A lot of details. A lot of nice little details in here. All right. We got a, oh, this guy's obviously been taken prisoner. Got some little sharp blade-like parts and stuff coming off the side of it. Again, with this really cool wood texture. I think that <laughs> it's really going to add a lot. I mean, it's nice and thick, too. Do a good job with it. All right. Uh, this looks to be perhaps the bottom of the ship. Maybe the top. Maybe very top of it. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Moving along. Ah, the balloon. You see the stitching on the balloon. And it's got some little pull marks. So, so it looks like it's inflated and stuff. That's pretty neat. I really like it. We got a little smaller one here for the side. It looks like we have another mirroring. This is basically the, the same sprue twice. All right. The airship. Flying pirate ship, they call it. That fit really nicely back in the box. I bet they have these separate so they could probably sell them separately. And uh, that would be nice. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, let's do these stretch goals over here. So here we have uh, Get Them Before Robin the Goblin. Roblin the Goblin. <laughs> Alright. Part one of three. Okay. I just happened to open it in the right order. There's two of three. And part three of three. All right. So here we go. All right. And so in this box, we've got a runic golem forest. Runic ancient temple. Phosphate of Chaos, Pro <laughs> Prophet of Chaos, and an Ogre. Ooh, that's a cool looking Ogre. Oh, wow. And this stuff. Ancient Dryad, Swarm Warrior, Swarm Warrior B, so we got some bug people. Doppelganger, Kobold, Duvrik, uh, Were Rat Assassin, Were Rats, huh? And Mad Goblin Scientist with a big gun. All right. So this is some of the runic parts, I believe. These sprues don't have much written on them. Again, really nice details. Big, thick, chunky chains. Easy to paint this stuff, too, when they do that. Especially if you use contrast paints or washes or something like that. You got some ogre parts, it looks like. Oh boy, he's a big ogre too. Look at that arm. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. So usually, the, you'll notice there's no instructions in these things. Uh, but a lot of, all of these I've been able to just kind of figure out. Like, and I'm not saying you should do that. But <laughs> I, I'll i kind of clip one sprue and just kind of piece them, you know, try them out. And I ended up. It ends up making sense, yeah, where all the pieces go. A big old goblin gun there. Interesting. All right. A lot of smaller, smaller characters mixed into these little sprues and stuff, but they're uh, they'll be kind of hard to to figure out. Like uh, most of these things, I would just take the whole sprue. I clip it all out, and it seems like they mostly keep all the characters. Like, especially the small ones, all their parts are on the same sprue. So you can kind of just see 
if you end up with extra parts, you just know that there's no extra parts. They're supposed to go somewhere. All right, and here's part two. We'll go ahead and open the plastic on part three. In fact, let's open all the plastics. All right, so here is Stretch Gold Box Part D. Number two. Inside, we've got Dungeon Huntress. She sounds pretty cool. Animated Gargoyle. Uh, an Outcast Yeti. Chamblay Mound. Kraken's Tentacles. So I guess I could go with the Kraken. Be some little extra, <laughs> little extra hands coming up out of nowhere. Uh, Bishop El El Sihu. Augmented Demon. Vashed. Were rat merchant, a couple of were rats in here. Uh, bear from the deep. Is that like an ocean going bear? Okay. Devourer of sanity. A lot of that going on. Scarecrow. Three cobalts in a trench coat. That's kind of cool. Um, the mind taker. Possessed mass of flesh. A troll. Hey, very cool. I like that troll. Looks awesome. Uh, Tyler the Dwarf Chieftain, Displaced Rider, uh, oh, that thing that was in the Dungeons and Dragons movie, and Bal uh, Basculus, Bas Basculus, yeah, okay, a lizard of sorts. All right, pull these out. Okay. Here's our first one. See some crazy Medusa here. Bunch of people standing on top of each other over here. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, they look pretty amazing. There's those tentacles. They're pretty big. They could definitely go with the other one. Or you could just have tentacles coming up out of nowhere too if you just got these stretch goals. The bang for your buck that you get with these Dungeons and Lasers kits is amazing. Now, yeah, I spent a lot of money. There's that thing. Oh, wow, and it's little tentacles and stuff. I spent a lot of money, but, I mean, compared to what you get from Games Workshop and other places. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, uh, when you buy another board game, like a Simon game, there's a whole game with that. A lot of cardboard, a lot of thought put into the rules and stuff like that. All these guys got to do is like make something really awesome and then create it. You know, they, they make the molds, the, the 3D render it, they make these molds, and they do it all in-house. This is the kind of thing I wish we could start in the U.S. I would love to be making things like this in the United States. Ugh. And I believe they do some assembled things too, like for other campaigns. I'm not too certain about that. Well, I mean, there's the he. They did He Man. If you go to their website, you'll see all the cool stuff that they've done. I don't know the entire history of them, but I think I was watching King of Average and I got turned on to this company. And um, oh, I, I there's just been no looking back. Like right now, they're doing a caves campaign, and uh, very excited. Uh, to to get that too, I it, it's funny every time, every time they come around, uh, like encounters, I spent some money. This one I spent even more money, and uh, I'm about to drop even more money still on caves. And by that I mean I've increased the amount that I'm paying each time. All right, so this is the third box of the stretch goals. Five E compatible. Yeah, so all of these things are not all of them, I guess, but uh, most everything I've seen in here, I remember seeing in D and D in some other way. So uh, it's been it's really cool. Ooh, there's a little piece of plastic something. What's funny is when little pieces of, of plastic come off, you never know if it's part of something important or just something there. <laughs> So here's some of their bases. Let's pull all this aside. This looks like it's a lot of little things. 
It looks like there's some big stuff too, but what's in here? All right, let's just run through it. We got the Queen of Winter. They got in that blue plastic. They can also cast in different colors. In fact, in caves, they're gonna have full color versions of some of their terrain pieces. All right, so Banshee, Vindu Caster, uh, some sort of monstrosity, Brain Squid, another Outcast, uh, Hand of Steel, the Construct. So some sort of construct, very neat. Uh, court Agent, the Fallen Queen, Champion of Lay, Krill Conscript, the Murderous Cube. I think that's what that little tentacle I found comes off as. So we've got a big gelatinous cube. Skull Magnus, Magus, an Armored Warrior, Displaced Rider, Mount Included in Box uh, 2 of 3. Okay. Oh, all right. So this is the rider for that um, that tiger thing with the tentacles and stuff. We got a mimic clock and a regular clock. So that mimics just pretend to be things. So that's the rate what it is. And then boom, it jumps out and it's a monster. And then Roblin the Goblin, swappable prop head. Okay. It looks like we've also got weapons packs. Weapons pack uh, warrior set one. Weapons pack two. So these are just sprues full of weapons and stuff that you can swap out or lay amongst a cache of things that you've got so that's that's a neat uh, little accessory all of these also have bases these uh, bases that they've uh, decorated really well these look better than the first ones like I didn't like a lot of I, I'm not gonna say I didn't like them but the some of the um, some of the bases in the in the encounters one I didn't end up using. I didn't like them as much as just putting them on clear bases, which is what I prefer to do. But these have a, like a really wide variety of interesting looking things. We got a little scorpion on some like dungeon tiles and some very nicely paved areas, as well as some jungle and desert kind of areas. Uh, that looks like he's on a boat or something like that. On, piece of wood like a giant tree stump or something very cool cool little bases there are these the same uh no yes all right so these are uh they got two sets of these things they're the exact same we got this little thing here it's one of those brains again All right, got that guy. We got this set. This looks like uh, one of the weapons sprues. Oh, it is for sure. Very neat. A little weapons sprue there. And I see some fairy wings of some sort. That's a very dynamic pose. They're really good with their poses and stuff. Not really, uh, I didn't, I don't remember anything that was just straight up boring out of the models that I built last time. And although I had trouble with some gaps in some of them, most, for the most part, they were good. That construct looks fun. I can't wait to paint that guy. Oh man, I don't know. I will probably end up painting, uh, 99% of this at least. <laughs> I'm not committing to everything like I did last time, but I'm going to paint most of it if I can. All right. Oh, that gelatinous cube is really neat. Really, really neat. Still don't know what this little piece is from. I bet it's I bet it's like a, a little piece that broke off of one of these things, but that's fine. All right. These are kind of hard to see too, but even this base is clear. That's kind of interesting. I don't remember them doing clear bases too. What's neat too is you can paint part of it. So you can paint... You go in there with some primer, you know, like a paint on primer, and you can paint on different parts of this so that it makes like the clear stuff is just kind of coming off of the, coming off the ground and it's kind of intermixed with ethereal things. I think that that's really neat. Uh, then we got another uh, two sprues of bases, so uh, probably plenty of bases. Uh, I, in fact, I wonder if this is like 
basis for a lot of the other rest of this thing. So, yeah, they're all the same. Uh, these are the same sprues as, no, are they? Oh, I found a little piece of something in here. Yes, okay, so these are all the same sprues, but you got four of these with the bases. That's kind of... All right, let's start with this uh, this little guy here. I think, I'm not sure if this was an add-on. I'm not sure. <laughs> so we got the Lord Beholder. I'm not sure how this guy came to be. If he's an add-on, he's a little something different. I know he's a little different. Like he was either a stretch goal or he was a returning back her favor or something like that. I can't remember. I don't know. But there he is. He's pretty cool. <laughs> Got some stuff for him. Nice little kit. All right, so now we're into the core set, and we'll go ahead and open those in order too. So we got one, yeah, one, two, three of these boxes. Into the world of Dulcer. Now, if memory serves, these will be the uh, the different races and people that you can play inside of that inside of their their world of Dulcer. And course set number one. I have several different people here. The Apostle of Fire, Bringer of Harmony, Corrupted Knight, Hand of something, Knight of Fae, Princess Karabula, and so on. Uh, this guy I've actually built and painted. In fact, these three here came extra with the Encounters Pledge, and I ended up painting all of them. So uh, I'm... I can see from the scale, these, these will be much smaller, like regular kinds of folks, I guess. Oh, and there's four different ones of these. All right, so there's quite a few people in here and two of these, all right. Got the Royal Commander, the Queen of Fae, uh, Vindu Assassin, Bringer of the Frost, Sarak, okay, I don't know what that means. Uh, Court Forerunner, Magic Smith, Morgu, Papow, 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 pa pa I don't know how to say that. Tender's personal guard, T Tendor, huh? Vog, oh, oh gosh. These are all uh, Ancient Dryad, Corrupted Mage, Ernie the, and SMA the Vampire. Ooh, a cool vampire in here. It looks like a super sexy vampire. So, so something I noticed with the last set, with the encounters, is that, uh, Almost all the characters were female. <laughs> I think they have one male character in there and he was like really, really old. And another one was covered in fur. So, <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe to have a few dudes to kind of uh, even out my squad of, of monster women. All right. Oh, so here's part of the, oh, wow. So that is part of the vampire, and you can see there's like bats coming off of her and stuff. Oh, or, or like, I don't know if they're coming to her or she's turning into a bat or something like that. That's, that's pretty wild. Pretty wild. Oh, I'm just, I, know, I gotta say, I love the detail. Love the detail of the, the stuff. All right. Here's the next sprue. Well, that looks like a big... A big arm or something right there. <laughs> so as part of this, I got a PDF with all the instructions, like a, basically their, their campaign book and their bestiary. So uh, in theory, I'll be able to look up by all the names of these things and see exactly what all they do. That would be really nice. All right, and here's some of those big guys. I recognize these guys. So I guess I'll have a couple of them. <laughs> if I choose to paint them again. 
they were not like I thought they were pretty neat, but they were not my favorite models to to put together and paint, especially compared like out of all the stuff I got from. So out of all the stuff I got out of encounters, uh, they were probably my least favorite thing to come out of that that campaign. So uh, the the rest of this looks so much better than what they sent with that <laughs> with that one initial like little teaser and stuff. These are way cooler. And they're all kind of like, you know, they're smaller proportional people and stuff. You know, more people sized things. Those other things are just like, they're kind of, it'd be huge. Like if it was real life, they'd be the size of a Volkswagen almost. All right. And that's that first box set. A lot of cool characters. So these are smaller. They might be like a little easier to paint. What I was thinking is, um, I was worried that I would just end up with like hundreds and hundreds of little small things and, and very deep a lot of hundreds of small very detailed things that aren't the same uh, can be sort of tedious to paint especially if I don't have something in mind but it's not the kind of thing I'd be opposed to clipping off and um, storing until I do need to <laughs> and maybe work on some other work on some other projects while I um, while I pull those out all right, let's get to box two. Uh, looks like we're getting into like there's some demon people or something in in this land. And I believe that's what we're encountering with uh, some of these creatures. Uh, not very many. Oh, okay. So there's a few of them. So stone wards. This cool stone guy. There's four of these. Paladins of Order, uh, Multipose, oh, also Multipose, so that means that they're going to have options, and you're going to be able to switch out the arms or the weapons or something like that, so you've got four of them, but they can all look unique, but you get to pose them and, and choose how you want them. Uh, this might kind of go in with those weapon sprues and stuff too, although I think uh, maybe they'll have different arms, yeah, it kind of shows on this picture they'll have like different arms and stuff. Uh, we got some devourers. Uh, I'm not sure what this says. J Jahana member, magic smith ap apprentices, uh, dark lupus, royal guard, and uh, a Vavada member. Okay, so those are probably either clans or cultures within this world of Dulcer. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. The odds of that being me pronouncing that correctly are probably pretty low. I'll be honest. But I'm trying. All right. Back into Sprue Town. Sprue Town, population me. The other thing to note in all of these is I haven't seen any more of these. So I have a feeling that the reason that box had... A whole lot of those sprues is because it's for all of this stuff. Because if you bought the whole box set, if you got the box set like that, you're going to get the regular stretch goals. So putting all the all the bases that they need inside of one of those stretch goal boxes makes a lot of sense. I don't know, and, and it seems like they repackage what they make, like they'll make these limited runs, and it's not the only time you'll be able to get it. But it is perhaps uh, the only time you'll get it in like this specific box set. I noticed, uh, well, like the trees pack and stuff, I think, I think that was spread amongst other things but last time. So I think what they do is they'll, they'll, they take what the content they have and they repurpose it so that uh, you can buy it again later. But, but you're not going to get it the same way you got would have got it if you'd backed it another time. I don't know if that's better or worse. Um, like I, I, I would assume that you kind of get a better deal on the stretch goals of the current campaign, and then you can buy those later for slightly more money in different in a different assortment. Like there might not be uh, this particular group of dudes, or maybe they're going to change their marketing. But you know, with no room for bases in these. I don't imagine they'll be just selling just like a box like this. 
Wow, some of these guys are really big. These must be those stone dudes. I'm really excited to put those together. They look really neat. I think my favorite thing out of those uh, those things I was just complaining about earlier <laughs> were the were, was the stone golem guy. He was he looked pretty neat. I didn't really like the little dudes that were on top of them. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be, but I liked those guys. So this will be really interesting with the multi pose. It means I'll have a lot of choices to make, and. Uh, and there's a lot of different characters and stuff in here. So it would be interesting to, to kind of put that together. So uh, so I play some Dungeons & Dragons, but mostly with me, uh, I play it online. So although I've got all this stuff, I don't really play with, with all these things in Dungeons & Dragons. My hope is to play them with Pulp Alley. Uh, Pulp Alley is a miniatures game that I like a lot. I don't get to play it very often. And I like to think about it more than I like to play it, I guess. But I think that I think that all of this stuff is just perfect and such a good deal uh, compared to other things that I see. Like this box of characters, man. This there's a lot of stuff in this box. And we're not even done. We're not even done. This is the last of the core sets. This is part three of the Dulcere Corset. Into the world of Dulcere. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I'm, I'm probably butchering that. All right. So here we go again. We got a crystal uh, dra dragon child, dragonid, dra like a dragon person of some sort. Multipose. Dwarven champion. Oh, dwarfs. I know somebody that loves dwarfs, says Owen. Dwarf champion, multipose. Yvonne members, multipose. A zenith, multipose. A zenith nymph, multipose. Chaos trooper, multipose. Gorbok trooper. Krill. All of these are multi. Strigs. I don't know what a strig is. All of them multipose, and there looks like there's four of each of these types of characters. Oh, and more bases. Maybe I was proven wrong. Looks like a lot of these guys are really small. Because they're just on these, like, couple of bases here. Or a couple of sprues. But, again, we've got more of those sprues. Those are confirming for sure. Yes, these are the exact same sprues as before. But we have another four of them. So, one... Two, three, four. Just kind of randomly inspecting these two. I'm not seeing any quality issues. They are nice and thin. I like that. Very hard plastic. Mm. I love, I love, love, love that hips plastic that they use for this stuff. There's just something really satisfying about it. They're not bendy. They don't feel cheap. It's kind of the next best thing to play with those old metal ones. Like the metal ones are kind of low detail compared to the plastic, but I do kind of miss working with them and stuff. Very nice. Very nice details. Not seeing much, uh, or really anything broken. That little swords right here. Uh, very well done. Nothing's curvy at all. <laughs> Not the worst, a big curvy sword. Be interesting. Uh, be interesting to know how multipose they are, or if that'll be confusing or not. Sometimes it's a little hard to to do all of them. Like some some of them seem like they do better than others, but I haven't tried any of theirs, so I'm gonna assume that they're great. Right? That's what you do, right? <laughs> Just assume they're great. Now that looks like the exact same sprue as that. So these two. These two there are the exact same. In fact, these two were also the exact same. So we got two duplicates here. And then are these the same? Yes. So this will have another one also. Wow, cool looking wings and stuff on there. There's the other side. Ooh. 
Wow, really, really cool monsters. These guys, I love painting monsters. And these guys know how to do some monsters, I tell you what. So I'd say, I'd say the four of these that were in that last box would be enough to do this whole, uh, all the Dulcere stuff. So it's interesting. It's interesting. And it's always fun to try to guess. Try to guess what's going on with these things. Uh, so this is something I really wanted uh, during the encounters. I, I think this is from some earlier campaign. And like I was talking about earlier, they've repackaged it to be on its own. It's probably a stretch goal or super stretch goal or something. Uh, I don't think it was always, you know, a little add-on item. But it's funny, their, their catalog of add-on items for their Dungeons & Lasers stuff is grown exponentially. Because these campaigns are huge. They make a really good amount of money. I think. They seem to anyway. They keep doing it. So I have to assume. Alright. This is one I was really curious about. And I want it. It's got the clear plastic. <laughs> Even the little connectors here. Are the clear plastic. And then here's the little pieces of it. This is something I'll definitely implement that what I was talking about earlier where I'm going to paint, you know, paint some of this and then let the other parts just be water and stuff. Very clear. Nice, nice big, uh, nice size to these pieces. I was worried it'd be kind of thin and dinky and not very substantial, but this is, uh, these are actually pretty big, pretty big little components, especially when you kind of start putting them together. You got a little turn in the water, a little straight through here. And it looks like we got two of those. Oh, three of those. All right. So there's this initial one and then three of these. So the river is mostly that. All right. That's pretty cool. And of course, we've got all of these things that are used to connect all this together. Um, I don't have any of their buildings or their other stuff. So I don't know. I don't really know how all that works yet. I'll have to play with this and see what it's like. The other, They have another set that's just like this, but it's orange. And I think it's supposed to be lava or something like that. That's got like a spring, like it's coming out of it. Might it probably doesn't have that on it, but I don't know. <laughs> I guess you could just make it a sprinkling, a sparkling spring could be a, a pit of boiling lava too if you paint it correctly. All right, and the last but not least, uh, we have the trees. Now, as I understand it, this is a this is a repackaging of uh, a bunch of stuff I got from the encounters because uh, these trees here I believe were from the swamp that I did not get so I didn't get any of the swamp stuff I got the I got the giants and I got the forest and these trees so we got these little pine trees and these other trees here are all from the forest this was this glowing tree it's more of that clear plastic stuff and that is, uh, I think, part of the stretch goals from the other one. And then these little kind of other trees here, I believe, were part of the swamp. So I'll get a couple of trees I didn't have and add to these other ones that I have already. And it should make for a really, really cool uh, forest once I'm done. All right, so here's the first sprue of trees. And uh, we'll just go through these really quickly. We have, uh, this one is the exact same. We've got another one like that. And this one is different. And I bet we have another one like that. Because you'll take these two, these two sprues and combine them to, to make these trees. Yep. But we have, yep. 
Got another one. Another. So three each of these sets. These orange sets here. We've got the little glowy tree. It's pretty cool. And this is the one I haven't had before. That's part of the swamp. Yeah, and so that's like one whole tree and you get three of them. Pretty neat, these are like scarier. It'd be cool to kind of make like a dead area in the woods or something like that where something evil lives, you know, the trees are starting to kind of get gnarly and stuff. Oh and boy, that's it. That's it, that's a pretty, pretty huge unboxing, pretty mega unboxing. Uh, I memo to myself, include timestamps. <laughs> so hopefully you jumped around and found something you like. If you like videos like this, if you like a big unboxing like this, uh, give me a thumbs up and let me know. If you want to see this stuff painted, uh, be sure to leave a comment and let me know. I can use that encouragement to let me know that uh, people want to see the, the paint jobs and stuff that come up with these and, uh, and, and seeing them assembled. I always love to see uh, kind of the finished product. I like to see the sprue and the finished product. That's why I work so hard to paint up that turtle or maybe something else too, who knows, for you uh, to see inside of this video. But folks, I'll be back real soon to see some of these things painted up. Just tune in again. I, I backed, I did the all in for caves. I'm all completely in on caves and uh, uh, I'll see you in a year to unbox that as well. <laughs> Until next time, enjoy your games, enjoy your models, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.